Surge is a process system phenomena that is the result of flow separation caused by low gas velocity anywhere in a compressor stage, in the inlet guide vein, the impeller suction, the impeller midsection, or the impeller discharge or diffuser. Centrifugal pumps experience the same flow separation phenomena at low flows, which sometimes cause the liquid to vaporize, resulting in recirculation which can cause cavitation. This was discussed in details in the course covering the operation, design and maintenance of centrifugal pumps. Now, as the process system requires more head in any type of centrifugal compressor, the flow is reduced to a point that causes flow separation. This event is commonly known as stall. An example of diffuser stall is shown here. This diagram depicts the view of a simple impeller with the side plate removed and a veinless diffuser. As the gas leaves the impeller via vector R1 as depicted here and which, if you recall, is the resultant of the gas velocity through the impeller and the impeller tip speed, the gas passes through the diffuser in a path that approximates a logarithmic spiral. Since the relative gas velocity is the Y component of R1 and will decrease with decreasing flow rate, the gas angle of the blades will decrease as depicted by vectors R2 and R3. So, as a result, the path of the gas of the blade will become longer with decreasing flow rate, as depicted for R2. At surge flow, the velocity of the wheel will be so low that the path of the gas will not leave the diffuser, as it is the case for R3. This will cause a reduction in the head produced by the impeller. At this moment, the compressor is said to be in a state of flow separation, flow instability or stall. Stall can be initiated by flow separation at any point within the compressor stage, in the inlet, midsection or the discharge. Regardless of the location of the flow separation within the compressor stage, a reduction in head produced by the impeller will occur. The dynamic compressor performance curve actually decreases to the left of the surge line since the flow separation increases losses in the stage and reduces the head produced. Now, take a look at the following simplified process scheme. Once flow separation occurs, the head produced by any dynamic compressor decreases, and the process gas present from the compressor discharge flange to the check valve flows backward through the compressor. This backflow causes the volume to be evacuated, resulting in a low discharge pressure. Since the head required by the process system is a function of discharge pressure, the head required by the process will decrease, allowing the compressor to operate in the high flow region of the performance curve once again. The reversal of dynamic flow caused by flow separation in the compressor stage and the recovery of flow resulting from reduced discharge pressure is defined as a surge cycle. This surge cycle will continue until either the head produced by the compressor is increased or the head required by the process is reduced. The quickest way to eliminate surge is to rapidly reduce the discharge pressure by opening a blow-off or recycle valve in the discharge process system. Stone wall is defined as the maximum flow a given impeller can handle. This value will be attained when the ratio of the relative inlet gas velocity to the sonic velocity of the process gas being handled is equal to 1. The name stone wall 
comes from the fact that the compressor curve suddenly drops off and appears to have come up against a stone wall. The cause of this phenomena is excessive relative gas velocity through the impeller. As the head required by the process system is reduced, the volume flow through the impeller will increase, as depicted in this example. Now, if you recall from a previous discussion, any impeller stage is essentially an equivalent orifice, with constant flow areas or orifices. Since volume flow is proportional to areas in gas velocity, an increase in the volume flow at the constant impeller dimensions is a direct increase in gas velocity. The limit of compressor high volume flow is controlled by the relative Mach number which is defined in the following equation. When the relative Mach number is equal to 1, the maximum possible flow by any dynamic compressor is attained. Relative Mach number is the ratio of the gas impeller inlet relative velocity to the sonic velocity of the process gas being handled. The sonic velocity, as you can see here, is directly proportional to K, the ratio of specific heats, and to the inlet temperature, and is inversely proportional to the gas molecular weight. Therefore, gases with high molecular weight will reach stone wall or choke flow sooner than gases with low molecular weights. This is the reason why the flow range of compressors processing high molecular weight gases is always less than the flow range for compressors processing low molecular weight gases. In like surge, stone wall is not a destructive phenomena. Since horsepower rapidly decreases in stone wall, most dynamic compressor mechanical tests are done in stone wall. This is to reduce sharp load horsepower. Also, dynamic compressors can only operate in stone wall if the head required by the process system is low enough to allow the compressor to operate in this high velocity region of the performance curve. For economic reasons, this is rarely the case, since most engineering contractors optimize process pipe design to minimize pipe diameter and therefore increase the head required at high flow rates. The only case of a dynamic compressor damage caused by stone wall that I have experienced involved the axial compressor of a gas turbine. The design of the combustion chambers and turbine section allowed the axial compressor to operate in stone wall under certain operating conditions. The high velocity caused shock waves which excited a natural frequency of a compressor blade row causing blade breakage. So my advice to you when sizing surge control valves for axial compressors confirm that the maximum open surge valve flow will not excite any axial compressor blade natural frequencies. This is not usually a concern with centrifugal compressor impellers since the impellers are usually of the closed type and therefore rigidly support the blades at both the hub and side plate. In the case of open compressor impellers where the blades are supported by only the hub, impeller natural frequency excitation should be checked. Recall that open impellers are used in older designs for the first and second stages of large multi-stage compressors and for plant and instrument air centrifugal compressors.